I, I, I don't know what day it is. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm completely clueless. They point me in the right direction, and I and I go. But I did actually get get some Mexican food. Thank God. Good. You know, I've been eating mostly uh, room service since I've been on the road. But I was actually able to get some tacos. So I'm happy. Does it give you the urge to cook? Um, you know, I would. I'm going to be thrilled to get back in the kitchen and eat stuff that I make myself, and I know where it came from. This. Uh, you know, it's, 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 I, I thought that I'd like lose weight on the tour, kind of running around, but you know, it's this endless like, cl chicken club sandwiches at eight, not, you know, ten o'clock at night before I crash in bed. So it's not so good with the, with the, for the whole diet thing. Don't people want to feed you? Yes, they do. That's another problem. People, people, <laughs> people want me to eat and they want me to drink gimlets. So, um, <laughs> and I'm happy to oblige them, but I, I, uh, it, it's not for the best. It's not the greatest diet plan in the world. So, but you know, you know, I wasn't. I didn't start uh, cooking seriously until I left Texas, and, and it was because I'd left Texas. I was up to school in um, the Northeast, and to my mind, as a Texan, you know, they don't know how to eat up there. And so I, uh, I did a lot of, you know, I started cooking to sort of uh, try to to recapture some of my food that I was missing. Uh, so you know, everything from gumbo to chicken fried steak to some really unsuccessful barbecue to you know. It, the, the Mexican food, all of that. And uh, so, you know, that's how I learned to cook. And I learned to cook in a really kind of ad hoc fashion instead of saying, oh gosh, I want to, you know, scramble some eggs and learn how to do that. I would say, I'm going to make seafood gumbo as Paul Prudhomme does it. And, you know, and so disasters ensued, needless to say. But um, by the time I, I, I came to the project and came to Julia's book, you know, I felt like I'd, I'd kind of done as much as I could on my own in this sort of ad hoc way. Um, and and at the same time, of course, I was coming to this point in my life where I was at this crisis, where I was getting ready to turn 30, and I was a secretary, I was unhappy, and um, and and Julia's book kind of spoke to me as a as a next step, um, uh, as you know, because it is such a comprehensive book uh, about classic French technique, and and honestly, writing is. Um, the sort of the real, the, the truest thing I do when I do it well, and it's, I don't always do it well. Uh, but, so I think, you know, coming to the moment when I could, I could produce something that was mine, uh, and that, and that I, and someone wanted to, to print it out, and, and that I was, you know, I, I, I could actually say, I, I made this, um, has been, you know, it's prof profoundly life-changing. And um, so Meryl Streep is like, She's like cake, you know. She, you know, it's great. Oh, and all of this has been, you know, cake and 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 more and more and more cake. Uh, but but at the end of the day, the meal is having written the book. Did did you ever have anybody um, who was associated with her give you any comment, feedback on your book or anything? You know, I I've met so many people who knew her in so many capacities. She just touched so many lives. And you know, just today, I was I was speaking to a reporter who who had you know spoken to her years before. And you know, I I. I, 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 this is not entirely consistent, but many, many people have said, I think that if she had known you, if she had met you, if she had known you at an earlier time in her life, if she had you know, better understood your motives, then that she would have appreciated it and that she would have you know, liked me. And, um, and that's, it's, so much, it's so appreciated uh, when people tell me that. I, I, I am honored that they would think that. Uh, at the same time, I don't want to second guess what her thoughts were, that her thoughts are her own. And I, so I basically, instead of saying, yeah, no, no, she really would have liked me, because I'm really cool, if she just knew me, um, you know, I just, I, I suffice, you know, I, I, uh, it suffices for me to say that, um, you know, someone like Julia, who does touch so many people, she, she sort of takes up residence in all of these people's heads because she's, you know, and, and, and everyone's Julia is a little different and it's hokey, but I, I really believe that, that, that my little Julia thinks it's pretty cool. So. <laughs> the thing is with Julia is that A, if anyone's entitled to her opinion, it's Julia right. Child. And B, and I think this is a great thing about the movie and it's one reason I really am glad that they retained that, is that part of the journey is not depending on what other people think of you, even if that person is someone who's so important. It, you know, the project wound up being a project I did for me, and I know why I did it, and I know that she was an inspiration, whether or not, you know, it doesn't have to be a mutual admiration society. If she liked me, she didn't like me, I, you know, her life changed, my life changed because of her, so of course I'm going to the exhibit. I, I love her. I don't love her because she loves me. I love right. her because of who she is. The movie is so much about relationships 
and I'm interested in the relationships with you and your friends. Mm -hmm. uh, did those relationships survive? Most of my friends were thrilled to be portrayed uh, in, in the book and in the movie. And, you know, I, you know, I kind of sexed up some of their stories a little bit, so they felt like they were, you know. And you might, I had one friend, uh, the woman who's Isabel in the book, uh, who, who, who struggled a little bit uh, with my depiction because I was <laughs> blatantly using her story to tell my own. Um, so she had to kind of get used to that. But, um, and, then, and then the movie comes along, and the movie depicts something that is purely a Nora invention. Okay. Uh, this idea of these women who are friends, quote unquote, who are right. more successful than me. And that's, it was very necessary to externalize the conflict that the Julie Powell in the movie was having. Um, but it, that's very much a Nora thing. Like, I, I like my friends. <laughs> and want to keep them. And I want to keep them. I, 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 I do the best I can. <laughs> Were you on the set for any of the uh, filming? V very little. I, I visited the set once uh, when Meryl was shooting the Julia uh, portion of the film. I did get to speak. That was the first time I met Meryl. Uh, I got to speak to her for a few minutes uh, when she was in, in her Julia regalia. and. Uh, and it was it was amazing. And you know, people ask me all the time, you, you regret not me meeting Julia when she was alive. And, and of course, you know, that would have been an amazing moment. But I don't know, seeing Meryl talking like Julia is sort of a close second. That was pretty good. And she's I'm I'm completely smitten with Meryl Streep. I, I think she's a wonderful, amazing person. Was there ever a, uh, was there something in your blogging or in your scene or or a uh, a dish that you made something that happened during that year that didn't make the movie that you would have liked to have seen in it? The movie is, 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 is scrubbed up a good little bit. Um, and I don't just mean the language, though, certainly that uh -huh. is part of it. Uh, but, um, you know, all the kind of really dirty, nasty stuff got cut out. You know, there, there are no maggots in the movie. There is no, um, you know, the, 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 the plumbing problems were not nearly as graphically portrayed as they could have been. Um, you know, there, there, a lot of the sort of day to day really kind of grout under the fingernails struggle. Uh, isn't there, and, and it shouldn't be. I mean, it's a Nora Ephron movie. You don't want to go see maggots in a Nora Ephron movie. But, uh, but I do think that, that in, in that way, I think some of my blog readers and book readers may come away going, I miss the maggots. I <laughs> as, a, as a writer and somebody who cherishes words, what do you think of the blogosphere now? And, 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 and now the next step, Twitter. Would you ever, would you ever Twitter? Oh, I, I, can't, I can't Twitter. I don't, yeah. I don't, I, I, I feel like I'm 82 years old saying that, but I, I, I did it for, I actually was banned from Twittering by the, <laughs> by the, by the movie, the publicity, because of course it's a promotional tool and they're mm -hmm. using this yeah. as a sort of organized uh, way to, to promote the movie and they don't really want me to be a part of that, which I get, and I was perfectly happy to say, mm -hmm. fine, that's great.